More Heart Than Talent Radio. More Heart Than Talent Radio is brought to you today by my audio training, Seven Steps to Seven Figures. Do you frequently ask yourself, how do I questions? Do you feel stuck at a financial plateau? Do you suffer from entrepreneurial seizure? Would you like to learn the steps to reach seven figures? The impact of mastering the daily disciplines of a seven figure income earner can assist you to change your finances, improve your relationships, improve your self esteem, and so much more, but only if you know the steps to take to get there. If you are committed to creating seven figures in the next 12 to 24 months, you can receive your copy of my Seven Steps to Seven Figures audio program for 50% off today. Go to goldenmastermind.com forward slash seven to receive your audio download instantly. Learning to value yourself, the psychology of self-worth. Jeffrey Combs, president and founder, Golden Mastermind Seminars Incorporated, on this beautiful Tuesday afternoon, the first Tuesday or the last Tuesday of July. Welcome to the call today, everyone. July 31st, 2018. I have a great topic for you today, the psychology of self-worth. Now, what does that really mean? Well, I'm going to cover that in detail. I'm going to go over a few quick announcements, then I'll move into the inspirational, conscious portion of today's call. This call is recorded and will be available on iTunes and Podomatic tomorrow, Wednesday, August 1st, and all of our calls are recorded and archived for download. So welcome to the call today. This Saturday, I will be in Chicago, Illinois, Saturday, August 4th, at the Rosemont Hilton. I've done many events in that location. It's a great fly-in place. It's about five minutes from O'Hare Airport. Rosemont, Illinois. Saturday, August 11th is a very rare date off, and I'll be back in action on Saturday, August 18th, in not Marina Del Rey this time, but at the airport at LAX at the beautiful Hilton Hotel with Brittany Cara. Brittany is an activist, an iconic woman, and someone you definitely want to share, someone I definitely am privileged to share the stage with. And she was the author of the highly inspiring book, The Silent Killer. Brittany will be a guest on my call in the very near future, as will some of you watching today. So I'm going to move right into the inspiration for today's call, and welcome aboard, everyone. I see some of you are calling in. I see Carolyn, Chris, Michelle, let's see, Maria, Julie Sharp, hello, and this is the, Carolyn's representing the GMS team there, so welcome, everyone. So I see a lot of you are calling in. Hi, Carol from Philadelphia. Welcome to the call. Now, the psychology of self-worth, what is self-worth? Well, self-worth is value. And how we value ourselves determines our value in the free market. It determines our value in the job market. And if you've had a job and you've been educated, you have more than one degree, you have a master's degree, a doctorate degree, postgraduate work, there's a high probability that will make you more valuable in the job market. A job will pay you what what the job is worth. Now, if if you are in free enterprise, you have the opportunity to create what the free market will bear. And so that means you get to establish your value in the free market. Now, if you are brand new at free enterprise and you find yourself overwhelmed at the aspect of letting go of the of some of the events that have shaped your feelings, it's not normal. It's conditional. And as you begin to separate your feelings from events that shape them, then you can raise your consciousness. Now, your self-worth, which is your esteem, is going to be established by how you feel about self. And your feelings about self will be a direct reflection of the events you hold on to, the events you let go of, and the new events that empower you. Empowering events give you a different level of emotional, etheric energy called consciousness. Events that you hold on to are anxiety, fear, and doubt. And when your body stays in a flexed flinch state like this, you're flexed and flinch, and someone walks into the room and you autonomically flinch or flex, and not because you know them, but because if you have anxiety about a repressed event, and this person walking into the room represents them, that is a term called unconscious. And as you become conscious of your unconscious, you're moving into a state of awareness called consciousness. And for you to establish your value in the free market, you do not require a reward, recognition. You do not require love from an outside source. You do not require adulation. You do not require to run a marathon. You do not require a hug or a high five. All of those can enhance 
some of your worth, but your self-worth is going to be determined how about you feel about self. Now, if you've been through a series of events of violations, traumas, rejections, and abandonments, and you continue to hold on to these feelings, then you will have challenges, number one, being intimate with self, and you'll have challenges with intimate issues outside of self. That means that you will be guarded. You will hold yourself back. You won't feel comfort-able in some of the progress and processes required for you to be available, emotionally available. If you own a business and it requires sales, branding, and marketing skills, your unconscious self will say things like, I'm not sure if I can put myself out there. And that uncertainty, that means that low self-esteem that you continue to perpetuate based on unresolved issues is going to be a direct reflection of what you hold on to consciously and unconsciously. The way you communicate with self about self will determine your worth. And your worth is an asset, but if you have very low self-esteem, then, you are, then you're living in liability consciousness. You have no assets. And as you begin to let go, meaning you practice the art of letting go, letting go is a skill. It's not a how-do-I state. Letting go is a skill practiced one day at a time, creating an auto-suggestion where autonomically, automatically, you're able to let go quickly because you no longer personalize situations. And this means as you move away from codependency and move into a place called independent autonomy, as you move into the independent autonomy, then you're able to establish a different set of criteria about self. First of all, you begin with words, I am enough, I am good enough, I am capable, I am the leader people are looking for. You begin to affirm, and affirm meaning state, declare, speak into existence, reality that you create. Unfortunately, a large percent of America uses a series of words that are non-committal. They use words like guess, kinda, sorta, and I don't know. If you don't know why you do what you do, you will continue to perpetuate the same set of feelings that creates the same actions that keeps you avoiding changing. It's not only success that most people avoid, it's the series of changes that most people avoid because change would represent the end of an era, the death of of the ego. Now, these are my notes. These aren't crypt notes. These aren't three by five notes. This is some of the content that my team prepared for me before this call. Self-worth is not conditional. What does that mean? Well, it's not conditional. It's not, it's self-worth is a conditioned behavior based on events that shape them. Having low self-esteem is not normal. Having low self-esteem is a direct reflection of events that have actually happened, events that you hold on to, events that you don't understand, events that you're unaware of. As you move into recovery, a recovery state means that you're able to separate your feelings from events that creates an emotional addiction. As you're in a state of recovery, you're separating your feelings from the events. It gives your brain and your body space to be one with. And it's in this one with state of consciousness that you'll begin to change who and what, who you attract, what you attract, how you operate one day at a time, And as you start to step into recovery, you will be less critical of self. Critical behavior and critical self is what continues to keep you avoiding changing. Avoiding changing also keeps you from avoiding succeeding. Now, that that leads to a place called failure consciousness. A large percent of the world and a large percent of America lives in a failure consciousness, meaning that they avoid failing, yet they attract to the reality the very situation they seek to avoid disappointment. And disappointment and failure become synonymous in this duality of approach and avoid. And that's what many people do. They approach change, they approach success, and they get right up to it and they tap on the glass. They tap on that glass going, oh my God, I can't get through this glass. I can see through it. I see those people out there walking on the street. I see them walking their dog. But I'm right here in my own emotional prison, not able to let go of the control that keeps me in control of being out of control. As you begin to have a better understanding of why you do what you do, you'll begin to separate self from the feelings that shape them. Now these are unhealthy ways to measure self-worth. The unhealthy ways that we do this is appearance. I don't look good enough. I'm 10 pounds overweight. I'm 20 pounds overweight. I'm this, I'm that. This is what many people do. Your self-esteem is not dependent upon your weight. Your self-esteem is dependent upon how you feel about self. Because you, you can be in the process of releasing feelings that hold weight in place and begin to feel good about yourself. Your esteem is not dependent on recognition and rewards. 
your self-confidence is. Self-confidence requires recognition and rewards. Self-esteem requires nothing because self-esteem has no definition, has no shape, it has no form. Self-esteem is love. Now you've seen the sign in Philadelphia love that is spelled out love in the big red letters. Well, that's what self-esteem is. But you can stand in front of that sign and that does not mean you're lovable. Even though the sign is there, the signs and the clues, that does not determine your worth. Your worth is gonna be determined by how you feel about self. Not how someone else feels about you, but how you feel about self. I'm doing everything I can, I'm giving it my best effort, I'm doing it my all, and nothing's happening for me. Of course it won't, because if you're addicted to disappointment, you'll continue to perpetuate the same situation over and over, so you can fulfill the same feelings that keep you in a low esteem. Now your self-worth is also not determined by your net worth. Now you may have read about people who are millionaires and billionaires, who for whatever reason, attempt or commit suicide, or something tragic happens to them, or they have some major health issue. Now in net worth, that would be your assets. But your assets in the physical world does not mean you have the same assets in your emotional world. And if you're not good enough or lovable, then there's a high probability that either you or anyone in this emotional duality will find ways to sabotage self. As you begin to love self, give permission to self, as you start to, as you start to develop self-worth and esteem based on how you feel about self, then you're separating yourself from your past. So that means your past has very little to no significance. And then you're also separating yourself from your future anxieties. If your future anxieties are about failing, then it's, an, it's time that you start to address why you do what you do. If you grow up in a critical household, if you grow up in someone around you is very critical, and you have to validate, justify, and explain yourself, there's a high probability that your neurological network of neurons that wire and fire will be in the same situation where when ask a question, you go into a dissertation. That dissertation that's unrelated to the question that's answered, that means you check out back, go into an unresolved issue and you find yourself explaining yourself. As you become aware of why you do what you do, now you're in a position that you can separate self from events. Your self-worth is also not a direct reflection of who you know. You may know people of influence and affluence, but that does not mean you feel good enough. And if you don't feel good enough, then you'll have challenges being able to converse, communicate, connect with people that you tell yourself stories about. It's very common, it's conditional, it's not normal, but a large percent of society talks, them out of, talks themselves out of communicating with people of influence or affluence, people of persuasion, people who appear to be successful because of their own low self-esteem. If you're in a business where you're recruiting other like-minded professionals, or like-minded success seekers, then it's imperative that you become skilled at asking questions in a sequence about outcomes you seek to create. Meaning, you let go of the story about self, but if you live in this situation, I haven't, so I can't. So if I haven't, and I can't, that means I've separated myself from a lot of people who have potential that I could collaborate with, that I could be productive with, who I could share a space with and a dream, any multitude of situations that many people talk themselves out of an opportunity because their self-esteem is very low, their self-worth is very low, and they live in a very low vibrational energy called anxiety. Now, as you begin to understand that anxiety is anger, hate, resentment, guilt, shame, abandonment, rejection, and overwhelmed feelings, then you won't hold on to past events. You'll be moving into a state of conscious awareness. Now in this state of awareness, your body changes, your energy changes. This is how you begin to address gut issues. You begin to address unresolved issues from your past. You start to, your, your neck begins to heal. Your back starts to change. A lot of situations happen because you begin to let go. What you hold on to that kept you constricted, kept you overwhelmed, now you have a space called allow. And in an allow space, you've now created a new space in the morphogenic field in the quantum field for people to synchronistically find you. Now you're in a place called the law of alignment. And in that aligned space of energy, you can attract your reality, people who are looking for what you're looking for. As you change your beliefs, you can attract your reality, people who believe in what your beliefs. Now, if you believe you're good enough, there's gonna be a few people in the universe who are gonna find you because they believe they're good enough. These are people that on command you can collaborate with. These are people that you feel an affinity with. These are people that you have an aptitude with. 
These are people that you feel you've known either in this life or some other time, but you feel some feeling about them and you feel your and their uniqueness. Your self-esteem and your self-worth is also not determined by achievements. You can be, you can own a business called Achievement Mastermind Group, but that doesn't mean you'll have esteem. I've seen many people who are top tier achievers, but also live in a place called apathy. They use achievement like a drug and they're always achieving. They're their identity is based on achievement, production consciousness. Now, I myself am very productive, but my production is not my identity. My production is my business. Now, I have a business. It also requires taxes. It requires payments. Has in, I have salaries to match. I have overhead, and I have all of those situations that are imperative, but there's also a place where you relax. Now, when you produce in a relaxed body and relaxed in a relaxed body, then there's a high probability of self-esteem that shows up in both situations, your personal life and your entrepreneurial or your job life. Now, many people's job and business is their identity, which means they have challenges relaxing and or resting. And if you have that kind of challenge where you're go, 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 you're all, all, all the time and you can't turn it off, then that means your identity is based on performance and production which means that you have high self-confidence and there's a high probability that you will have challenged esteem. Your relationship status is also a direct reflection and an indirect reflection of your ability to feel about self. When you're not good enough, you will find other people to reinforce those feelings or you'll attract other people with low vibrational energy. When you are in a position where you are comparing yourself to others, and this is so common to compare yourself to others, well, I'm not where I should be. Where should you be? Well, you're right where you are because your feet are grounded right there. You're right where you are because that is where you're supposed to be. If you were supposed to be somewhere else, then you would be there. But it's very common to be disappointed with performance. And the reason that many people are disappointed with performance because they're not performing up to their standards. They have such a high standard that they get overwhelmed that they can't start to match their standards because they can't get off the launching pad. And if that is you, it's, it's, it's imperative that you understand that your standards are so high that you procrastinate. And your procrastination is a direct reflection traditionally about performing. And you can't perform up to a set of standards. And this is what many people have responsibility consciousness. They're so anxious about being able to maintain responsibility that they avoid responsibility. And if you, this is you watching this content today, then my suggestion is you understand what the two words let go means. Let go means separate feelings from events that shape them so that you are no longer the mind-body connection to the events that shape them. If, now, if you're, if you're listening to this content today and you're going, how do I? Well, the content today is not a how do I content. My content for you today is to have a better understanding of these two words, cause, effect. Then I put the word and in there, cause and effect. So if you're overwhelmed, there's a high probability you're overwhelmed based on unresolved issues and events that you hold on to. Overwhelm will create the disorganized space. Overwhelm creates the lateness that you, most people perpetuate. Overwhelm creates over-obligating, taking on more situations than can possibly be addressed. Now, if you find yourself in this situation and you keep asking yourself, how do I? The real question you learn to ask yourself is why do I? Why do I do what I do? If you don't understand why you do what you do, you continue to perpetuate the same emotional loop to create the same result that creates anxiety, fear, and doubt. As you move above anxiety, fear, and doubt, there's a space between anxiety, fear, and doubt, and consciousness. It's called the gap. And the gap is where many people reside. They go in and out of consciousness and revert back to doubt. They have a good week and then three or four bad weeks back to back. Then they have a good week, they muster up their self-confidence, and they race to success at the end of the month. They actually pull it off. They close the sales at the end of the month, and they win the trip. They win the reward. They win the cruise. They get to go to their con convention because they pulled it off at the last minute. Well, that's not organic. That's not systematic. That's not, that's not methodical. That's not duplicatable. When you are organized, when you are in the moment, when you are in the present, when you have a system, when you live in routines, when you're someone who understands the inner game of life and the inner game of business, and you're here and you're now in a place called the present, then you're not in an overwhelmed state. You're not in, you're not in anxiety, and anxiety is anger, 
hate, resentment, guilt, shame, abandonment, rejection, overwhelmed feelings. And in that state of consciousness, you're, ele you're elevating your energy. And that energy that you're elevating is called love, joy, bliss. And in that state of awareness, you're also creating prosperity, energy that's in the flow, energy that can duplicate itself over and over. It's challenging to duplicate yourself when you live in a very high intense energy because that intense energy burns off. Athletes live for it. They, they get up for a big game, but it's the athletes that play 162 games, that play 82 games, that play 16 games over a long season that have long careers. Unfortunately, many people enter free enterprise. They purchase a product, a benefit, or a feature for $500, $1,000. They don't have a lot invested in their present and their future, and they quit easily because they have instant gratification consciousness, shiny object syndrome, MMO, might miss out. They put all their energy into to succeeding overnight, and if they don't get instant gratification, then it fosters their low self-esteem. Now, that kind of person requires instant gratification to fulfill their self-confidence. But someone who has esteem, and esteem is it's like this. This is what esteem looks like. It's gravity. It has no shape, has no form, has definition. It walks into a room, and in the energy that walks into the room, it's a set of clothing with no human being in it. And in that type of esteem, that is love, that is joy, that is bliss, and that is iconic energy that people feel. And people feel that energy, they feel what's exuding, and they want to be a part of whatever it is because that's unconscious magnetism. And it's that unconscious magnetism that creates synchronicity, meaningful coincidences, attracting to reality, people of like mind coming together who are in love with self, love with process, love with life, love with others. This is someone that you seek to attract with because you have instant rapport with this kind of person. They're not separate from, they live in a place called one with. And that is a state of being that you can be in right now. It's not something you think about. It's not something you evaluate. It's not a book you read. It's not a seminar you go to. It's not an event you attend. It's not coaching. It's not practical. It's not reality. It's you. It's you being you and you being enough. You being your best one day at a time and you going to bed without being critical. And it's that kind of energy that you begin to duplicate. That's duplicatable. That's simple. Simplicity is duplicatable. What's my homework? What can you tell me to do? What should I do? Who should I be? Well, that's the kind of person that's not coachable because they want instant gratification. They want technical know-how. <laughs> Esteem is not technical know-how. Self-confidence requires technical know-how. Self-esteem is love, and as you start to practice love, and this is not complicated. Well, how do I love? It's, it's, not, something, it's not something you practice. It's, it's, love is love, and as you start to love, it's, it's, it's non, it doesn't have a shape, and that love is what you bring into the room. You bring that into your office, and it's the love of the game. That's the love of life. But if you bring force into the game, and you're not bringing your power into the game, you bring force, and you try to force yourself to be someone you can't be, well, then you're in conflict with self, and that conflict with self will create avoidance tendencies. And it's those avoidance tendencies that will keep you avoiding changing. See, that's people don't avoid success. They avoid change because change would lead to success. You can't succeed in a body you're overwhelmed in. It just won't happen because the space is different. The space of success is no definition, but the space of addiction is a lot of definition. There's drugs. There's alcohol. There's compulsive debting, there's compulsive spending, there's anorexia, there's bleeming, bulimia. That has a lot of shape and form, but success has no shape and form because success is an energy that attracts people of love to you. And as you start to stay in that space, that creates synchronicity. People begin to feel you and then they make statements like, I don't know where I found you, but there's, there's something about you. And it's that kind of instant rapport that you will create in attracting a soulmate, a teammate, a, an employee, a contractor, a, a networker, someone at an event, and it's that kind of energy that becomes synchronistic. And that will begin to show up on command. And you're, some many of you are practicing this. As you go to a restaurant, there's a parking space there. You go to a parking lot, there's a parking space right up front for you. That is the universe rewarding you for the person you are becoming. And in, in that type of energy, that's conscious awareness. In that kind of energy, that's a be and stay state that you expect this to happen frequently. And the more that you let go of perfection, now perfection is more than one meaning. So you can be a neurotic perfectionist or a practical perfectionist. 
You can be methodical, systemized, and organized. You can be a detailed person, or you can be very neurotic and be ADD, overwhelmed, and so perfect that you can't perform. Unfortunately, that's where a large percent of the population is because they're so anxious about failing. And if they don't do it perfectly, they even have to fail perfectly. And if they don't do it perfectly, then they can't get off the launching mat. So as you begin to have a better understanding of what letting go is, letting go means my ability, my ability to separate my feelings on the events that shaped my anxiety, fear, and doubt. And this is not, this is not something you do physically. This is an emotional release that you have by taking a breath. And it's that breath you release that lets go of the neurons that wire and fire based on unresolved issues that you've repressed and held on to that you don't understand, don't know, don't recognize, and don't know how to release. As you step into a place called awareness, have a better understanding of breathing, speaking, and action, and you put them together, that's what creates the compounded effect one day at a time. The word sales, the brain oftentimes will take a look at the, at the word sales and create rejection out of the word. Or the possibility of engaging someone about a business opportunity, a product, a service, benefit, and a feature will overwhelm a large percent of the population because the population's brain has taken a picture of a past event, held on to it, given it meaning, and that meaning means rejection. That meaning means abandonment. So if your prospect doesn't buy from you, for many people what that means is your father who promised to pick you up on a Saturday didn't show up. That's how rejection gets formed. As you're walking to the playground and someone picks on you, that's how rejection gets formed as you flex and flinch your body. The thought of putting yourself out there, the thought of asking someone a question, of not knowing what to say, of making a mistake, or getting in trouble is enough to send the body into fight or flight. Because those feelings that are unresolved and repressed create a low self-esteem, low self-worth. Your worth is not determined by the past. Your worth is determined by your feelings. And the way you feel about self would determine the way you show up daily. Now, if you show up today in a very relaxed, released body, and you move into this afternoon in a state of enlightenment called consciousness, and you, and you be and stay in the state of consciousness, there's a high probability that you'll be able to have a, a, a day where results are created. And the result may not be tangible, but the action you take is what will lead to results. And results show up in more than one form in one form, and results are their definition, and results are undefinable. You may not be compensated today, but it's the energy that you transmit today that may attract someone tomorrow. And you have to also be able to look for the, cl the clues and the signs on the journey. So Crystal Smith is covering this. She's saying that breath work is powerful. Rest Crystal, that is absolutely correct because breathing is a skill. Now what often happens is we live in this place right here in a short breath syndrome. So my hands are right here. So a lot of the society lives right here and they live between here and right here. This would be your left brain, the neocortex of your left brain. Now, it doesn't mean it's the left brain, but it comprises the largest percent of the brain. Your limbic brain is back here, and then the reptilian brain is over here. So, and then your cerebellum is up underneath all of this, and what many people do is they live here and here. And so they live in a place called fight or flight like this, and because they've flexed and flinched so much of their life, hi, how are you today? I'm having a really bad day. I have no self-esteem. Do you want to join me? Hey, you don't? Good. Just go ahead and reject me and let's get this over with really quick. Now, a, a relaxed being understands that when someone doesn't buy from them, oftentimes it's because the buyer is not qualified. Oftentimes the buyer has buyer's remorse. The buyer oftentimes can't create a decision. And even yesterday, I had a few people say to me, yes, I really want to do this, but, and they go into a dissertation. I know they're not rejecting me. But what I know is they're not in a position to commit. And so I can easily and effortlessly, in my self-worth, let them go without feeling like I did anything wrong, made a mistake, offended someone, or any multitude of situations that will perpetuate the same set of anxieties over and over. So this has been great being here with you today. Jeffrey Combs, president and founder of Golden Mastermind Centers Incorporated. Now, this is my 19th year. No, what is this? My 21st year of hosting this call. Back in the day when I started this originally, it was a 5 p.m. call in the afternoon. It was originally a women's workshop. It then graduated to 7.30 Pacific time for 20 years. This is call, no, this is 
video, not call, video number three of More Heart Than Talent Live, Facebook Live, 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. This call is recorded and will be available for playback. Now, this right here says 20-minute free coaching. So what I'm offering today, anyone that's on this call that's not taking advantage of any of my free coaching services or you are considering hiring me to be your coach, I have a package for some of my advanced students. I will offer that to you if you contact me on Facebook. But I am offering 20 minutes of free coaching today. If you will send me a message on Facebook with your phone number, I will be back with you in a relatively short period of time. This Saturday, one of my favorite cities, one of the best restaurant and sports cities in America, next to my favorite city, St. Louis, that would be Chicago. I'll be in Chicago, Illinois, this Saturday, Rosemont. Look forward to connecting with you. I'll be back here next Tuesday. Thank all of you for being on here today. I see Steve Reynolds, Amy Gilberg, Maria. How are you? I love all of you. I see a lot of my coaching clients. Steve Reynolds, can't wait to see you in Atlanta. Amy, Long Island. Grateful all of you. Carol, thanks everyone. Have a great afternoon from the GMS Studios. Thank you for listening to the More Heart Than Talent Radio. If you enjoyed today's content and would like more insight, and how to release emotional overwhelmed and procrastination tendencies, then take advantage of my free Procrastination Cure Book giveaway. If you are committed to letting go of your procrastination tendencies, begin the process of changing your identity now so you can finally go from procrastination to producer. To receive your free copy now, go to goldenmastermind.com forward slash pro.